Hey Mustangs, for these notes we're going to be taking a look at populations and what kind of things can happen within a population. Now for these notes I'm going to say use the pause button. Um, so when you get to a slide go ahead pause it, fill in your information, and then go ahead continue uh, once you've got that done. So very similar to what we do in class. Alright, so let's take a look at what can happen in populations. Alright, um, so first definition of population. So population is a group of the same species that live in the same area. So if we look at the next slide here, each one of these is an example of a population. So here's a population of frogs, here's a population of buffalo, here's a population of mice. Um, so each one of these represents a population. So the same species living in the same area. Okay. Um, so a, a key part of that is the same area as well. Um, there could be different populations of buffalo, uh, there could be different populations of meerkats if, it's, if they're living in a different area. All right, what can cause a population to grow and what can cause population to decrease? So here on this slide, we have a couple of examples of uh, what could cause a population to grow or decrease. So as far as growth, births are going to cause populations to grow. And another thing is going to be immigration. So immigration is when organisms of the same species from a different population come into that population. Okay, now you're probably familiar with this word um, when it comes to immigration, when we're talking about like illegal immigrants, stuff like that. Um, it's, it means the same thing. So when someone comes, let's say from Mexico, or they come from China, they come from Italy, they come from England, if they're coming from that population into the US, uh, we call that immigration. Same thing works for animals though too. Um, so if an animal from one population goes to a different population, then it's going to be considered immigration. Okay? One way to remember what immigration, remember the I for in. Okay? So uh, individuals from a different population are coming into a population. Now populations can also decrease. Um, so there's two main causes that would cause a population to decrease. One is death. So when organisms die, the population becomes smaller. Second is emigration with an E. Okay? Emigration with an E is when organisms from a population are going to leave the population and go to a different population. Okay? Um, so for example, living here in the United States, uh, someone decides to leave and move to France. Okay? Uh, if that's the case, they would be emigrating from the United States. They are leaving the United States. One way to remember emigration means to leave, think of E for exit. So E for exit, individuals are exiting or leaving the population, uh, which is going to cause the number of individuals in the population to go down. So if you do move to France, the population of the US just decreased by one. Okay. Um, now we could apply this to our own lives here. So births, if your mom is pregnant and she has a baby, your family just increased, right? There was a growth in your family. Um, if a family member moves into your household, they're coming into your household, your family just grew. Deaths, unfortunately, it's part of life. So if someone in your family dies, your family decreases by one. Uh, if someone leaves, so moves out of your household, then your family has decreased by one. All right, so let's take a look and compare. So if the number of births is greater than the number of deaths, so let's say there's 1,000 births, and there is a hundred deaths. So 1,000 births, a hundred deaths. That means the population is going to grow. So we're gonna have growth in the population. If the number of births is equal to the number of deaths, so here we have, let's say, a thousand births and a thousand deaths, there's gonna be no change in the population. If births is less than deaths, what that means is we're gonna have, let's say, a hundred births and a thousand deaths that's going to cause a decrease in the population. Over here, immigration, emigration. So remember, immigration is in, emigration is exit. Okay. So if we have a thousand individuals come into a population and we have 700 exit a population. So a thousand came in and uh, 700 exited. That's going to cause the population to grow. If it's equal, a thousand uh, come into the population and 
a thousand exit the population, then that's equal. There's no change in the population. Finally, if we have immigration, emigration, if immigration is less than emigration, so 500 individuals came into a population, but 700 exited the population, so that's 200 difference, uh, you're going to have a decrease in the population. All right, so here we're talking about how populations can grow and how they can decrease. So here's something I want you to think about. Two elephants could increase to a population of 19 million elephants in 750 years. So just starting with two elephants, having them mate and produce offspring, in uh, uh, 750 years you wind up with 19 million elephants. Okay. So question, why isn't our planet overrun with elephants? Let's go ahead and think about that for a moment. All right, so let's find out why. Now, there's two type, different types of growth that you're going to need to know about. The first is called exponential growth, and we're actually going to be doing an activity in class with this. So with exponential growth, um, this is where a population grows to infinity. So the population just keeps growing, 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 bigger and bigger and bigger, um, and this is due to having unlimited resources. Okay? So here's an example of how um, a graph would look if you actually charted a population that is growing exponentially and we call it a J curve. So the population is just going to keep on growing and growing. So if we look at it, it kind of looks like a J shape. So it goes up, 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 up. So the number of individuals just keeps on increasing. This means the population is growing. So here's time and here's the number of individuals. So over time, individuals uh, keep on adding to the population, causing it to grow and grow. And uh, according to this type of growth, it would, they would grow on to infinity, that the population would never stop growing. Okay. Now, Another type of growth we're going to take a look at is going to be logistic growth. Okay? With logistic growth, uh, this is when a population grows or st uh, grows um, to a certain point and then they stop growing and it's due to limited resources. Okay? Um, so here if we take a look, uh, this uh, is going to be what the graph looks like for logistic growth. Okay? So in logistic growth, the population um, grows. So here we can see the population growing. So the number of individuals increases, increases. The population is growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they hit a point where the population doesn't grow much bigger than that. Okay? Um, the point where the population can no longer get any bigger um, is called the carrying capacity. Okay? So the carrying capacity is the point where the population cannot grow any bigger. Um, that's the point where the environment can't support any more individuals. And the reason for that is if you have more individuals, there's not enough resources to keep them all alive. So they run out of water, um, they run out of food, they run out of space. So food, water, and space are the most common uh, resources that are um, very limited in an environment. Um, so once the population hits that, they can't grow very much higher than that. Now the shape is going to be what we call an S-curve. So the shape will be an S-curve for logistic growth. So if you saw on a graph, you can tell that a population is going through logistic growth based on the S-curve, the S-shape. Okay? Now in logistic growth, um, when you hit carrying capacity here, uh, this is what actually happens in nature. So in nature, Populations are going to go through logistic growth, not through uh, exponential growth. All right. So, in nature, what other things can affect population size and population growth? So go ahead and think about that for a moment. What can affect population size and population growth? And go ahead and write down some examples on your paper right now. So what can actually cause a population to uh, grow and, or even decrease? All right, so there's things that can cause a population to change um, that are called density dependent factors. With density dependent factors, the size of the population is very important. Small populations are not going to be affected the same way as a large population will be. Okay, um, so it says here the size of population uh, determines if the factor will cause the population to grow or decrease. An individual's chance of survival in this case uh, depends on the number of individuals that live in the same area. 
a density independent factor. Um, the population size doesn't matter, it's going to affect the population no matter what. So it doesn't matter if it's a large population or small population, it's going to be affected. So what I'd like you to do uh, is think about this. Will small and large populations be affected the same way? So place the examples into the correct columns on your paper. So on your notes, you actually have a section where it says uh, density dependent and density independent. And you're going to place these into the correct columns. Okay, um, so go ahead, pause the video, and take some time right now to put them into the correct columns. So competition, think of a small population and think of a large population. Is competition going to be uh, greater in a small population? So is it going to be more intense competition, uh, trying to get resources such as water, food, and space, or in a bigger population where there's more individuals? Okay, well, when you think about that, you're going to say, wow, in a bigger population, uh, there's going to be a lot more competition. Okay? Um, so here, competition is an example of a density-dependent factor. The more individuals, the more competition there is. Okay? A food shortage. So say you run out of food. So a population runs out of food um, in a small population. Is that going to be a really big deal versus a large population? Okay? Uh, well, let's say we're stuck in the classroom and there's only five of us and all I have is you know maybe some walnuts a box of Cheez-Its and some graham crackers okay uh, so if there's only five of us stuck in that classroom uh, we could probably survive on those limited resources there but let's say the whole class is in there um, so for some reason we're trapped in the classroom and those are all the resources we have um, what's gonna happen so with 42 students it's gonna make a big difference so food shortage is going to be density dependent Okay, uh, disease. Okay, so how is disease going to affect a small population versus a large population? Okay, uh, depending on the type of disease, uh, size does matter. Okay, um, so in a small population that is really close together, then you're going to have it spread very quickly. Uh, if it's a large population spread out, it might spread very slowly. Um, so disease is going to be a density dependent factor. Next one is human activities. So in human activities, how is it going to affect a small population versus a large population? Um, so let's talk about cutting down a forest. Okay, so let's say there's a small population of monkeys and humans come through and deforestation. They cut down a large part of the forest. Um, is that going to affect the monkeys that live there? Yes. Let's say there's a large population of monkeys. Humans come through and cut down the forest. Is that going to affect them? Yes. So in this case, regardless of size, um, they're going to be affected by it. So this is a density independent factor. Um, parasitism. Parasitism is very similar to disease. De depending on the uh, population size, it could uh, spread fast or slow. So that's density dependent. Predation. Okay. So the number of individuals. So predation is when animals are going to hunt down and eat something else. That's predation. Uh, so a lion hunting down a zebra is an example of predation. So if there's a large population of zebras, how is that going to affect the lion population? Well, that's going to be a good thing. If there's a small population of zebras, how is that going to affect the lion population? Uh, not going to be a good thing. Okay, so predation is density dependent. All right, the last one, natural disasters. Okay, so with natural disasters, we're talking about fires, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, stuff like that. So if you think about a small population, okay, so say there's a small population of uh, ladybugs living in a forest, and a fire comes through the forest, okay? Um, if the ladybugs are in the right place at the right time, they might survive. Let's say there's a large population in that same forest, and fire comes through, well, is it going to affect them the same as a small population? Yeah. So here, natural disasters are going to be density independent. So it doesn't matter if it's a large population or a small population, um, a natural disaster can wipe out an entire population or reduce an entire population. All right, so that's our notes. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Take a look at your notes, go over them a couple times, and if you need to, go back and uh, watch the video again. Uh, make sure you pause, and it, the parts that you didn't understand, uh, go back and, and review those. All right, have a good one. I'll see you guys.